Hello, Ben. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, thank you to you both for having me on. Our pleasure. Um, so, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about what you do, Ben? Yes, of course. Um, my name's Ben Talbot. Um, I'm a professional golfer. Um, I've been a full-time playing professional for about two years, um, although I turned professional back in 2011 more for a coaching perspective, um, and that was at the end of university. So, Wow. I mean, we probably can't go any further without discussing the Masters that just happened over the weekend. Did you watch it? I did, yeah. I managed to get a, a pass with the girlfriend, so she was, she was <laughs> great. She, she just let me just let me watch it. It was uh, it was awesome. Yeah, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it, and a very very deserving winner. He was he was awesome. He was he was yeah. He was head and shoulders above the others, and um, yeah. It's there's something special about the Masters. It's just quite unique that it's this time of the year, not the start. So unbelievable scores as well from like the top three. Like the other two would have won any other year, but he just absolutely destroyed it, didn't he? Yeah, it suited uh, it suited him perfectly in regards to sort of the the skills he's got. Um, he's obviously a huge hitter, and Augusta's it gives you lots of opportunities, but it you have to play good golf shots. You you, you know if you you, you get punished um, quite severely if you, if you you know if you, if you if you let certain shots slide by and he was just he drove the ball beautifully and, and putted well and yeah absolutely you're right the others would have won it other most years and it wasn't to be so um yeah you had a guy that shot in the 60s four times and and, and didn't win he was five shots off off winning so yeah it was it was quite a unique tournament so how did you get into golf so i um i've been playing golf for, for a long time my dad got me into it and when i was about 11 um, I joined a, a golf club as a junior member. I think my parents were really keen on that because it was such a cheap crash. They just dropped me off with five pounds and I'd be there from sort of 8 a.m. to sort of 7 p.m. and they didn't have to worry about me in the summer holidays so, um, and weekends as well. So that, that was that. Was that. I, I became, okay, or, you know, made friends up at the golf club and, and just got the bug really. It's quite a, a unique game in that, it's only you that determines the score. You, you don't have anybody else. It's not subjective. It's just up to you. It's how you perform. And that's something that, um, that I got the bug from. I, I used to play a bit of football at, at school, but I was pretty useless. Um, I played cricket as well. And uh, I decided to give it up when I finally got a few runs and then got run out by, the, by my teammate up the other end. And uh, <laughs> I, just, I just thought, you know, I, I sort of want to do something that I can control. Um, the goal's strange in that you can control your own score, but uh, somebody else can beat you. It's it's a bit like we were just talking about the Masters. It's quite unique. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's my passion. I love playing it. I, I love, um, you know, the, the effort that you put in doesn't always come through, but it will do eventually. And, and it's something that, yeah, I just love it. There's nothing more enjoyable for me than playing well and, 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 you know, performing well in the tournament and beating others and hopefully winning. When did you start getting into tournaments? So I, I'm, I've done it quite uniquely, really, in, in a little bit sort of a, a strange way. I, I ended up going to university. Um, I studied uh, applied golf management studies, which is a degree course. So we, we <laughs> I got asked that a lot. I got an awful lot of stick at uni with my mates, and um, I never, I didn't do very well in it on nights out when I was talking to other sort of female students, <laughs> and they didn't, they they just looked right past me and, and left. So I used to sort of say I studied physics or law or something in the end. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I, I learned pretty quickly that golf wasn't to be said. It was strange actually because you had to get your handicap down to a certain level. Um, it's four for men and it's six for females, and that sort of allows you to start a degree course. Now, you do three years of training, but it's, it's normally for people that will go and coach or they'll um, work in retail with regards to golf or they'll become managers. So it's something that it, it sort of allows you to coach. And that's the sort of way that I was thinking that it would open more doors for me. Um, and that's why I, did the, I did the, ended up doing the degree course because – sitting you know for me three years at a golf club or three years at university at, at Birmingham it, the latter seemed a lot more enjoyable to me so I ended up going through that route and 
I, I wanted to focus on my career. I wanted to become a manager and try and climb the ladder that way. Um, and I, I did well. I worked hard, but I played golf on the side. Um, and and I, I played professionally, but at a low level. So there was still financial gains. And, and I started doing quite well and got better each year. And I just got the bug, really. I just absolutely loved it. Um, I loved sort of obviously, you know, developing each year and, and various ways of doing it. And my girlfriend, um, who loves travel, she works in travel, sort of one, one Monday morning said, I want to move to Sydney. And um, I was leaving London for work and I just thought, yeah, I could do this. <laughs> it sort of makes sense. So <laughs> we, uh, we, left, we left for Sydney a couple of years ago, and uh, it, 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 three years ago, and it, it enabled me to, it was a bit of a, a release really. Sort of as soon as I handed in my notice for my job, it sort of, I was like, right, okay, this is sort of where it starts. So we traveled a little bit and I ended up getting a job in golf out there, but that allowed me to, to sort of play and start practicing and developing as a tournament player um, and sort of trying to put the foundations in so that when I came back, I was able to, to sort of take it on full time and, and, and go from there. Um, so I, I, I landed uh, back in April of last year and, and sort of have been playing uh, sort of full time since then on, uh, on a couple of different tours. Mm. So you sort of mentioned earlier or alluded to the fact that obviously it's a, it's a single person sport, right? You've got no teammates to, to back you up. It's all very much a mental game. I have a massive right. love hate relationship with the game, you know, because some days you go out and hit shots and you're like, Oh yeah, I, I can play golf. And other days, you know, you just can't hit a ball straight. Well, I can't anyway. So how do you kind of deal with that sort of isolational uh, mentality? It's a really good question, and, and the the scores on the on the top level. I mean, we're talking the PGA Tour are so varied as well. Um, it, it's not. It happens quite a bit where somebody will shoot seventy five, sixty five, or you sometimes get players that will shoot seventy eight, sixty two. So you can almost have like a, an eighteen shot swing in the space of twenty four hours. Uh, they don't understand why it happens and, you know, and, that, and, and they hit the ball. So it, it's, you're absolutely spot on. It's such a, it's such a unique game. I always think there's many moving parts. So, you know, there's a lot that can go wrong um, with the, with the swing. Um, and, uh, you know, when you, when you uh, proper tournaments are obviously four days in a row. So it's, you're striving for that consistency. You know, it's, it's, um, there's a, there's a bit of a cliche with it, but you're, it doesn't really, be, you know, you need to have a good round in you, but your bad round needs to be sort of level par for us because then you're not losing too much ground on the rest. Um, it's something that, that is, it's just a varied sport. Um, mentally, you know, psycholog psychologically, you can, you can have a, a strategy in place. You're all, you, you've got to sort of tr try and come off a, a, a hole, whether you've made a, a birdie, the same as whether you've made a triple bogey. You sort of need to stay very, very present you need to let it go. You need to focus very much on the, on the shot at hand, um, which is your next shot in golf. That's always the most important thing. You can't control anything that's just happened. And it's a case of, you know, staying present, getting a little bit out of your own way and just hitting that golf shot without too much outcome thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. It then builds, you build up and you, you know, you, you end up putting a round together. It's, you know, a shot takes a second, but a round of golf can take bloody five hours sometimes six <laughs> hours a bit, you know if it's a bit slow so it, that's the quite unique thing about golf and that's something that um that I've certainly learned playing with these good players and trying to develop it myself so how does professional golf actually work then so you turn up to a, to a golf club and you you realize you're quite good and you start progressing more and more but what's the actual structure to getting onto the tours you're on and then you know progressing even further it's a really good question. It's if you're old enough, sorry, if you're good enough, you're old enough. That, that is a big, that's a big one. Um, and when I say that, that obviously allows you to create the impetus and, and, and work up. There's sort of two main ways of getting up a level. There's various levels of tours and, and, you know, the PGA tour and the European tour are right at the top. Um, but if you um, if you get an, an invite or, or an entry into quite a big tournament and you perform very well, say you come top ten, most tournaments that will give you a start the next week, um, and then you can all of a sudden start to develop some some income and some rankings, and and then from there, if you do 
well enough, you'll be able to retain or, or sorry, create yourself a playing opportunity on that tour for the next year. Um, that happens quite a bit and management companies come in and they really make a, they, they can really help in terms of getting invites or getting starts for, for players that they feel will, will make a, uh, an impact in golf. Or you can every year, um, bar this year, uh, there's, there's a thing called tour school. So for, for us Europeans um, and some Americans as well that come over and play in it, um, but European tour school is like a three-stage event. Um, it's £1,800 to enter. It's really, really tough. Stages one and two are both four rounds and you need to finish in the top 20 or 20 two it depends on the on the numbers but to get through to the next stage and you try and work your way up if you get through to the stage three um it's a six round tournament if you can if you can make various cuts you're able to gain either a european tour card or a challenge tour card or and it sort of sets you up they're the main two tours so i have a i'm able to play a few events on the challenge tour um and i also play under that as well in, in various ones so that's sort of the way you get into it. It's um, the bit that's hard is it's quite expensive and travel's not cheap. And to some tournaments are one day, some are four days. Um, you're sometimes playing on golf courses that suit your eyes, some that don't. Um, sometimes you get late notice. You've got to fly to, I had to fly to, it's not too far, but Dublin sort of the next day. I had a, an opportunity to play out there. And sometimes you've got to take it. So at the start of your career, it's, it's not particularly glamorous, but, you start learning and, and, and you know, creating a, a way of playing yourself um, and finding structure, then all of a sudden you can start performing well and competing and, and, and taking your game to the next level. In team sports, you have coaches and different coaches of different parts of the game. Um, and as a team, you'll work through that together. How does it work in a solo sport like golf? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. Um, and it's even harder that golf is split up into sort of six, seven, eight different categories. It's um, it, that's what makes it it makes it quite difficult. So, you know, you're you're trying to learn a, you, you, as a as a professional golfer, you can't really have a weakness. You um, it makes things very very difficult if you're trying to carry so to carry a skill, for example. You know, if, you, if you're not particularly good in bunkers, you need to get your game to or your bunker play to a certain level where it's not going to hinder your performance when you're playing. Because in a four round tournament, you're normally going to get faced with certain shots you don't like and you have to be able to, to create that. So you've got your core skills such as driving iron play, wedge play, um, putting bunkers. You can go on from there and sort of subdivide them. But probably the, the, the again the, one of the most important or if not the most important is your psychological skills so I've um over the last couple of years I've developed a team uh, and I'm really lucky that my best mate Phil Akers who works at the Belfry he's my swing coach and then I have a, a guy called John Howells who I was at university with he's been fantastic he helps me with my short game um I also have a, a, a guy called Neil who played out on the tour um who was my boss out in Australia so he helps me with my psychological approach and I've then got the, a mate that does my sort of strength and conditioning and things like that. And, you know, you, you, you develop your skills up until a sort of level. And with golf, there's, there's a lot of stats. So you, you've got a pretty good understanding of where you sit regarding certain levels of golfers in the world. So, you, you know, you can, you can look at, you can subdivide, but basically you know that your putting is pretty good and you can stat track and, and understand where you are. But, yeah, it's about getting your game... To, to a really solid level so that if you're not quite on which is most of the time you'll you'll take your c game or your b minus game to a tournament and you have to be able to swing and you have to be able to compete with that very rarely do you swing amazing and everything goes amazing it's, it's quite it, it, it doesn't happen like that how did you go about building that team of experts around you so what i had to identify where i was weak and and where i could um make easy gains really it's sort of like i i like the, the, the analogy of low-hanging fruit and um it's like anything you you you, you put the effort in and you can get quick gains but all of a sudden you plateau so i try to get all my areas of my game with as little input or effort as possible up to a you know competable level and then keep working and you know hold them at that level and then hopefully excel in some um 
putting is, is, a, is a game within a game, but that was a weakness um, of mine last year and, and, and years past. And all of a sudden, I, I've, I've, it's very boring, but made it a strength. And, and I can now sort of, it's wonderful. It sort of re- allows me to relax a little bit more on, on there. But with stat tracking and things like that, it's, it's um, and, you know, with the coach's guidance with it being fantastic, you know, you're working on technique. You're then putting it into, can you take it onto the golf course? And then can you do it in a tournament environment? But then can you do it in a tournament environment under pressure? So you've got different levels of, of, of working working um, and getting your game to that sort of level. And there's so many ways of producing a score where you're playing really well with your swing, but your putting's not on. And diff- basically different things come and go through, throughout a tournament week. So it's about creating a solid level of technique that you can rely on that works for you in a tournament environment. So as a, as a pro golfer, what is the average day? You know, you mentioned working on your short game, maybe working your swing, maybe working on your mental approach. What, how do you break your day down usually? You, you're obviously, you, you, sometimes you're, you're in a tournament um, and a tournament week is is uh, or very minimal technique. You're sort of getting your game and your confidence up, and you're preparing ready for that week. But most of the time, you're you're in between tournaments, and and depending on what tours you play on, depending it determines sort of how many you play or your your ratio of sort of tournament rounds to practice. Um, so with this year especially, I've I've practiced a lot. I've had a lot of time on my hands, and um, it's something that. The time really is a cliche, but the time really does fly. Um, with different areas of the game, I'm trying to, um, like I said, maintain my, my level of, of skill in, in, in each area. Um, so a typical, I'd like to break it down, but a typical day, I, I normally try and do sort of around eight or nine hours. Um, if it's a full practice day on my game, um, that will break down to, say, a couple of hours putting, and that could be a couple of hours swing work. I could then put some sort of short game work in there and then play nine holes. And then at the end of the day, I might, you know, hopefully work on work on my strength and conditioning and then we'll do some mental work. So quite quickly, you can, you can lose those sort of eight or nine hours. If you're, if you're sort of, um, if you're not sort of switched on and I have to put sort of things in my diary um, with alarms saying that right now I move on to the, onto the next one. But yeah, it's a case of, I, I, I like to put at the moment, um, there's a bit of pressure on me you know it's it's at the moment it's my only source of income and I want to give this a proper go um mm. something that it's it's difficult I've got to I've got to if I work hard and it doesn't work out then that's very different to knowing where I could have done better so yeah it's it's I'm really really focused on it and, and like I said work work hard so do professional golfers like yourself base themselves at a, uh, a local course maybe um and maybe Maybe do a bit of work as a pro on the side, maybe? It's a really good point. Yeah, they, they do. So um, the players that have, say, full status um, on the European Tour and, and, you know, the Challenge Tour, they're at, they're at a level where they don't require any other sort of probably additional income. Um, and also, it, they're, they're, you know, it takes up an awful lot of time. So they don't have a lot of downtime, um, certainly in the, in the spring, summer and sort of autumn. But yes, a lot of so my my sort of level of golfer, which is say like a part challenge tour and a little bit lower, uh, I play on some of the other mini tour events. Yeah, we can we can coach. You'd, you'd find golfers that will work at golf clubs because that's a sort of bit of an in. And at a golf club, you're able to meet people and and hopefully gain some sponsorship that way. And um, it gives them a bit of a base. That's right, and 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 it puts it puts sort of a little bit of less pressure on them. Um, because if you if you're putting all your eggs into one basket and, and and you're not quite performing, it can get quite difficult. So yeah, it's a good point. So to work at a golf club or be a PGA pro, do you need any other qualifications? You, if you want to coach, you do. So this is where you 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 need to do your you need to get your handicap down to a certain level where you can start your you start your your training. So most people will do that at a golf club and they'll do they sort of it's distance learning and it's um and they go from there gaining a pga status so they're able to they're a pga professional and they're able to coach um and go from there i did mine at, at university um which like i said was cool and and it 
it set me up that way. So I have a bit of a safety net and I've, and I've gone round it the other way, but most PT is different. You either basically have a coaching or a teaching professional, and then you, you might have a tournament or a playing professional. There's two different categories. Um, and I'm more of the, I am the playing professional. I, I, I don't coach. I, I, I put all my time into my playing. What are some of the biggest personality traits that help pro golfers thrive? It's a great question. It's because it's such a unique game. You spend a lot of, uh, you spend a lot of time on your own um, and you need to know yourself really, really quite well. Um, I know what sort of makes me tick. And um, certainly my girlfriend does. She, she finds me very, very boring, but, but <laughs> she understands, she understands what, what is required. Um, the big, my, the big, I always focus on three massive things when I'm playing and, and when I'm, when I'm sort of, in tournament mode the most important thing is i feel to i call it my process but i i I'm so focused on that one shot at hand it doesn't matter what my past or the future or i'm so focused on that particular shot what do i have to do here what is my strategy um can i hit this club can i do i have to hit that club where is my miss what what am i fit for? you know what's the window all these different factors and um that sort of if you focus if you focus on that one golf shot that's that's most of it you're, you're then sort of staying present so having done either great or poorly at the start of the round or or what have you at the start of the tournament you're very focused and staying present you're very in the moment the grass is green you're humming a song whatever it is but that that allows you to to be at your optimal performance shall we say it's very difficult to do um sometimes and, and it's and it's very easy to if you're playing well jump forward and picture yourself where oh i could do this or, or what have you um but in between shots like we said it takes a second to hit a golf shot but you're out there five hours so there's a lot of downtime and and if you're if you're very if you're good with your head and you and you you know you're sort of you're able to switch in switch in and out um I like to sort of focus on everything but golf and, you know, it could be when we were traveling or it could be my football team or humming a song or what am I going to cook tonight? So you're sort of, you're very, very neutral. You're walking, you're walking around, you've got a high level of self-confidence. You've got to, you really back yourself. Um, but you're very neutral. I think you, you, you tend to see that on tour, but of course it varies. Some players are quite exuberant and, and colorful, shall we say? And they, they um, perform well at that level, but the majority, and I'm one of these where I like to stay on a, on a sort of arousal wise on a, on a sort of par and I'm working on things to help me do that. And, and it's, it's great when it works. Um, and when you're able to deliver under pressure, that golf shot where you've got lots of things going in your mind and then you, you're able to, to execute it, if that makes sense. hundred percent. If I go out and play golf and just don't think about it, my game is a hundred percent better. Yeah, you're taking the. What you want to try and do is take the outcome out of the golf shot. So, that's that's a that's a, a great way of starting. But basically, when you hit that shot, you you although there is trees, bunkers, you know, and that could lead to a score. All of a sudden, your mind starts to race. But if you if you just go, right, I've just got to hit this to that target. Fantastic. That's 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 where golf gets fun, and that's where you all of a sudden shoot these great scores because you're like. Wow, I didn't. We didn't. Re- that was quite easy today. I wasn't really thinking. So you're spot on that the mind plays a huge part of it because it's such a fine skill in certain aspects in terms of club face control. You you, mm. you do. You've got to be. You've got to be good mentally to be able to execute it. Certainly under pressure. And um, what are the biggest positives for you of the industry? For me, the work and the effort that I put in when it comes to fruition and I play well or and I, and I win an event for me that's just the ultimate it, it's such a great goal and it's something that that's what that classic pyramid sort of structure but you, you're putting all that effort in to, to gain the gain the reward um you know a lot of a lot of time golf tournaments are quite hard to win you normally field anywhere between 40 to sometimes nearly 200 um, and you know you're trying to come out on top, which isn't easy. Whereas in a game of football, it's obviously eleven versus eleven, but there's three outcomes, and it's a lot easier to to win. Um, for me, you know, put it, the biggest thing was 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 committing full time to the golf. And last year, I was able to 
win a prime in Romania, which sort of gave me the funding to carry on and, and, and back myself and, and then enter tour school. And I was able to shoot a 10 under 61 in the third round to help get me through to the second stage. And it was, um, it's when that, that's the great thing. That's when, when, when you, you know, and that makes you, that makes you continue. And it's very, very satisfying. Yeah. When you're playing well. And on the other side of that, what are some of the less favorable parts of uh, being a professional golfer? Yeah, I mean, not to mention COVID, but obviously that that does make things difficult. That's an added added sort of factor. Um, but it's it, it's it's difficult um, when you're putting a lot of effort in and you're not getting the results. And, and mm. golf is golf is really unique game in that you can do everything you feel. You can control all your controllables but you're not getting the score or the, or the rewards that you think you should. And, and you're trying to stay focused and, and ment- uh, mentally sort of stimulated on that factor. And, and it, you know, keep telling yourself it will come and, um, you know, staying really positive. Um, that, that gets difficult. I spend a lot of time on my own. Um, and that's, you know, having worked in, in golf clubs and social situations and being at uni, I, I, I find that a bit strange. I, I I, I'm, I'm getting better with it, but some, you know, you have to do a lot of work yourself and, um, you know, that, and you have to start, sort of stay stimulated, you know, in that respect. And obviously golf isn't all tournaments. There's an awful lot of practice. So, you know, there's times where I'll need to, I know I need to put three or four hours into just putting, you know, and, and it's, it's something that it can get boring. I try and avoid that B word at all costs, but it can get boring and you have to stay focused on, on sort of the, you know, your end, your, your task and, and on sort of the end result. And, and when, when it's raining and, and when the wind's blowing and it's cold and there's all these factors that are like telling you just go home, but you've got <laughs> to stick it out. You've got to keep going. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, they're probably the, the toughest things. Probably but the other hard bit is, is, is financial. Um, and it's doing it where it's sort of take, you got to, if you take advantage or if you take your opportunities, finance shouldn't really come into it, but it gets tough when, um, you know, when you, when there's not, you're not, I've got not a lot of, a lot of income streams and I'm, and I'm sort of focusing primarily on playing. And if, if it gets difficult when you're not playing well and you don't see that financial return and, and it, Ooh. That that sort of you know our next point is usually we talk about average salaries, but with something like this, it's incredibly hard because uh, we went away and looked for stats on you know average prize money and in, in the tours and whatnot, but it seems to range so massively. It's hard to pin it down. And I suppose with something like this, it it just grows exponentially. Uh, spot on. I, that's exactly the word I was going to use. Yeah, exponential. Yeah, it it, it can. You you. A tournament will cost me anywhere between fifty pounds to to tour school, which is eighteen hundred. Um, but most tournaments are between sort of fifty and say two hundred pounds. But then you've got your your accommodation or your travel and things like that, your expenses on that go on top of that, and 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 that's where it sort of you you know you get into the hundreds. And you know I I can it, it's actually very easy for me to come away with zero. So you're already sort of quite a bit down. If I don't play that well, I, I'm not going to compete. The standard is very, very good. But I could, in, in a tournament, I could earn a few thousand. If I play in a bigger challenge tour event, I could earn tens of thousands and, and, and life is good. But like you said, if you start getting onto the top tours and, and the PGA tour, for example, which is, which is fantastic um, in terms of sort of prize money, you, you're looking at millions and then all of a sudden you're not worrying about anything, but yeah, it grows exponentially. It's very similar to tennis in that it's, it's the, the, the money is, is right at the top. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not driven by that, but it, it, you know, at the lower level, you sort of, it, it, it's you've got to be quite, quite clever and, and I, I'm quite good because I don't spend anything on that's that's the way I, look <laughs> I don't I don't really uh I, I try and keep my costs down in that respect what's something that you didn't expect you'd have to deal with as much as you do it's yeah it's a um really good question Matt I think I think the ability how important psychologically it is um whether you're whether you're practicing or whether you're playing, but it, it really is the art of playing a tournament is something that you, you just, you need that experience and it's something that you try and analyze and, and work on each time. But the, the importance of, of the mind, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's so, so, so important in regards to 
staying, like I said, staying present and doing the basics well and then the scores come and, and not getting drawn into where I might finish or, or things like that. It's, um, and, and, and the, you know, you can't get down on yourself. I, I sort of have this little analogy where you're sort of trying to talk to yourself as if you're a primary school teacher talking to a, to a pupil, like a naughty kid. It's like they're quite encouraging, but they're not, you're not down on yourself. You're trying to encourage and, 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 and get your focus point back. Um, yeah, it's, it's a different, it's a different uh, way of doing things. And, and when you're traveling and, you know, I was just in a, um, I played a, a challenge tour event in, in Northern Ireland and it was the COVID bubble. So it was, it was airport, COVID test, hotel, okay, I passed, I can play or I'm negative, sorry. And then it was a case of hotel, golf club, golf club, hotel. And it was just that for the whole week. And I couldn't go out and see the beautiful Northern Ireland countryside. I just had to see a travel lodge, which, which wasn't too bad, but I didn't want to see this travel lodge by the weekend. I'd, I'd had enough. Um, and then you're trying to scrap and, and find a flight home and things like that. So yeah, th- th- there's a lot of things that, that come up, but it's about staying very committed and, and, and backing yourself really. Apart from the core skill set, what's something else that pro golfers should now be developing? So, you, you, your core skills in golf are huge. They really are. It's not the case of it's, it, you know, that they are the absolute fundamentals. You need those. So, when you get those to a certain level, um, you can then make obviously gains psychologically, like I mentioned. But at the moment, there's a huge emphasis on on sort of. Hitting the, hitting the ball far. Um, so you, I'm trying to develop my level of, of golf fitness, um, which is a strange one because it's a power, it's a rotational power move that, you know, you need to generate huge amounts of force, but do it over five hours and then obviously not get injured. So that's something that, that I'm working on with, with, with my coach there. Um, I enjoy the gym. It, 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 it's great. I'm always on my feet. I'm naturally very skinny, so I've got to eat a lot. But it's something that if you have that, um, a little bit like Bryson, he didn't show it at, at the Masters, but if you can hit the ball a long way, it makes things an awful lot easier. It really does, even on your B and, like, especially on your B and C game. Um, did did you see that ball he lost? Did you see that ball he lost? I did, yeah. It was sort How of, I mad was, is that? Yeah, I know. That happens. That that's golf. Um, you can. I've I've been in tournaments where I've hit one, and the spotters and they they put the green flag up, and you get up there, and they can't find it for you, and you're like, oh, you've just given, you've just said it's okay, and you have to walk <laughs> back, and you and you have to walk back, and and then there's other times where you think, oh, that's definitely gone, and they find it, and and you know, spotters are they're not always there. You have to have good eyes um, to be able to sort of find it. But yeah, that 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 can happen. That's that's Augusta. Um, and although they were the unique factor of the TV, yeah, it was it was surprising that they didn't find it. But like he had to go back to that tee and be as neutral as he was when he before he hit the tee shot. So it's, it's yeah, it was it was quite good to watch. It was a lot. It was good to watch for I guess for a lot of amateurs that do that and can't find the golf ball after. <laughs> Definitely. Over recent years, obviously the game has developed massively with the amount of technology in it. You know, balls, clubs. Um, but what's the next? development within the game yeah good question they will they will limit or the certain the certain parameters that obviously the the golf equipment can be um designed so you can't have a a golf ball that's going too far or a driver that that hits the ball too far so they're they're very very um they're very very like sort of careful with that but it's a really good point because golfers are now becoming athletes and they're training like athletes they've got to be quite careful with with what happens um and you know they want to obviously motivate amateurs to go and play golf and um it's something that i i I do i think they will make further restrictions the golf ball is 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 the big factor they can they can sort of make sort of alterations on that to limit its distance and things like um but it totally, they can sort of design a course how they want. They can set it up how they want and they can make it quite difficult. And then obviously you've got the weather and things like that. But courses probably will keep, you know, they're going to be longer. And um, it's a case of, it's a case of sort of making it as fair as you can for everybody, I guess. Mm. Have you got one piece of advice for anyone listening to this and thinking like, do you know what, I'm going to give this a go? Yeah, re- it's, it's something that if you if you give it a go you've got to give it your all 
And like I said, those those eight hours can go really quickly in a day when you when you're practicing. Um, so if you do it, you've got to do it properly and you've got to get a plan in place and you've got to get a structure and you've got to make sure you play enough tournaments and and sort of understand that for the first year or two, you're, you're, you're going to work at a loss. So you're not even going to make money. You're just going to lose money. And then all of a sudden, if you if you work on the right things and, and you go from there and then sponsors might come in and that makes things a lot easier. And then you develop your game and, and, and you go from there. It's it's something that I, for me personally, I, I, I wish I'd have started earlier. So having, I wish I'd have invested in my game earlier. So I wish I'd have had better lessons and, and better advice when I was an amateur. So when I was safe, sort of, you know, 15 to 18. And then if I'd have got into an American uni, it would have made things an awful lot easier. Uh, the, the structure that they have in place for the performance level is fantastic. They do things so differently to, to, to the UK unis. And not that you just have to go to uni, but you could then be good enough just to pursue your career. But for me, I wish I'd have started earlier. And, and you hear that so often. Like, mm. you know, you'll be playing with Bill, who's 40, at a golf club, and he goes, I, I only started when I was 18. I wish I'd have started earlier. And then everybody, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. Because it is so difficult, it's that 10,000-hour thing in terms of to, to reach elite. And some people are ready before others. And, um, you know, Wayne, Wayne Rooney was Premier League ready at 16. and Rory McIlroy was was European, so already at probably 16, maybe 18. And, you know, some people develop quicker, but the average age is 31 to make it onto the tour. So I, you know, in terms of time-wise, it, it, golf's strange in that. It's probably one of the only sports where age isn't a massive factor. You can, mm. you can make up for it in different ways. So would you still go into the industry knowing everything you know now? Yeah, I would. A little bit like the sort of my previous answer in that I wish I'd have gone, I'd have, I'd have started yeah. earlier, but I do. It's, it's, it golf's my passion. I, um, you know, I, my, my brother's a, he's a, he's a doctor, you know, he studied medicine at Cambridge and, you know, he, he loves studying. He's going back for more study and I, uh, you know, he's just done a master's and, and I, I just, I look at him and think he's got three heads. I'm like, why do you want to study? <laughs> um, and he looks at me and he's like, why do you want to putt for three hours? And I, you know, I, I guess if it's your passion, you know, which, which it is for me, um, go for it I, I love it. it like I said it's the it, it's when you can do it in in the in the top at the top you know tournaments and, and things like that under pressure when you have to it's it is so so satisfying um so yeah I wish that I wish I'd have gone into it more um I wish I, wish, I would still go into it sorry but I, but I would have done it earlier I would have would have would have gone for it everything when I was sort of 18 um you know and and, and gone from it that way rather than developing myself in the, in the industry but a diff, completely different line or tangent and then trying to trying to do it so yeah that's that's how I would do it if, if I could again but I would go into it. I, I love golf well Ben it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you and thank you so much for coming on my pleasure thank you so much for having me and uh, all the best with your golfing careers <laughs> thank you uh, and just before you go where can people find you on social media so I'm under probably the best bet is Ben Talbot Golf on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to to sort of update and, and put as sort of much content as I can up there. Um, that would be the best bet. But um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, so Ben. My pleasure.